Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a light fruit cake. By light, I mean light in the color and light in the amount of fruit it contains. But what's great about this cake is we can eat it the same day it's made. It's not like some fruit cakes where you have to feed them with alcohol for several weeks, but if you still want that boozy flavor, what we can do is soak the fruit a day or two before we make the cake in some alcohol. And that's what I've done here. So just take a bowl and in the bowl put three quarters of a cup, that's 120 grams of candied mixed peel, along with a half a cup, 100 grams of either red or green cherries, whichever one you want. And I cut mine in quarters, or you could just cut them in half. It just depends how large you want your cherry pieces to be. And then you will also need a third of a cup, that's 40 grams of dark raisins. Now, you can vary the uh, proportions of these fruits just to suit um, your own taste. And then what you do is just put it in a bowl, stir it, and then you want to add about three tablespoons of alcohol. I used um, Grand Marnier. You could use rum or a brandy or a sherry. And then just stir that. And then just cover it with a piece of plastic wrap and let it sit at room temperature for at least a day. Actually, I let this sit two days. And when you think of it, every once in a while, just give it a quick stir. So once that's done, then we can um, start the batter. So uh, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And we're making this fruitcake in a loaf pan. So just get your loaf pan and either you can lightly butter or oil it, or I'm just going to give it a quick spray on these non-stick ones. So this is basically a butter cake batter. So if you have a stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment, or you could just uh, use a hand mixer. First thing you need is a half a cup, 113 grams of butter. I like to use the unsalted. I like the flavor better, but you could use the salted. And have it at room temperature. And then I'm just going to beat this just until it's uh, nice and creamy and smooth. And then to that, add a half a cup, 100 grams of granulated white sugar. And scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl as much as you need to along the way. So I'm going to beat this for a couple minutes. I want to get some air into that. You want to do it till it's light and fluffy, two to three minutes. So this is what we're looking for. We're just trying to get some air, mix those together and get a little air in there. So I'll just scrape down. Next, we're going to add three large eggs, one at a time, beat one in and then the next one and the next one. Have your eggs at uh, room temperature. Now, you will notice after you add probably a couple of the eggs, there will be, the be it will curdle. So don't worry about that. That's very normal. When we add the dry ingredients, it's just going to smooth right out. Give that a quick scrape. Make sure you do the bottom of the bowl. And our last egg, along with a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Try to use the pure, it's better flavor than the artificial. And we are going to um, add some ground almonds to this batter. So what I'm doing is adding just a quarter of a teaspoon of pure almond extract, kind of bring out that almond flavor. Just beat that in. Okay. 
So as you can see, the batter is curdled. So now for our dry ingredients, in a separate bowl, I have one and a half cups, 195 grams of all-purpose uh, flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that, I'm going to add a half a cup, 50 grams of ground almonds. You can grind, you know, process whole blanched almonds in your food processor until finally ground, or you can just buy ground almonds called almond meal or almond flour. A lot of grocery stores now sell uh, ground almonds, or you can find like specialty food stores, health food stores, or of course online. And then also we're going to add one teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And then the zest of one small lemon, that's just the outer yellow skin. Don't grate the uh, white underneath because that's kind of bitter. Try to use organic if you can. And you could also use orange zest. That would be also very nice here. Or you could even leave it out if you don't want that flavor. I think it just lemon or even an orange just kind of perks up all the flavors. Okay. And just, I'm using a wire whisk, just whisk it all together. You want to make sure that that baking powder is all mixed in to the flour. Okay, so what we'll do is add just maybe half of the flour along with our fruit. And if there's any juice on the bottom, just pour that right in. You don't want to waste any of that flavor. And like I said, if you don't want the alcohol to taste, just don't bother marinating or macerating your, your fruit in the alcohol. So just low speed, just mix that in. Then I'm going to add a quarter of a cup, 60 milliliters of milk. You can use um, whole milk or I'm using a like 2% reduced fat. And just beat that in slowly. And then scrape that down. This is a really easy fruit cake to make. And then the rest of our flour, and we're done. Okay. That's it. Take your pan. Just a quick stir to get all the flour mixed in. Just pour it into your loaf pan. with the back of a spoon or I'm just using an offset spatula just smooth it out here okay and then if you like you can garnish the top with some uh, shaved or sliced almonds good so now we're going to bake this 60 60 to 70 minutes 
you will find it rises not too much, but it will turn nice golden brown and a toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. Now, if you find it browning too much, you could just put a piece of aluminum foil over the top of the pan to uh, stop the browning. So. Okay, so our fruit cake is done. As you can see, it's a beautiful golden brown color and a toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. So now just let it cool on a wire rack in the pan for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and take it out of the pan. So to remove the fruit cake from the pan, just use a knife or I'm using a flat spatula and just run it along inside. Make sure it's not sticking. And then, just, pan's still hot, so be careful, and like so. So I'm just going to let this cool, just, you know, 10 to 20 minutes, and then we'll cut a slice. So now to cut your fruit cake, just need a sharp knife, and let's cut it. The first day, you will notice that the uh, crust is quite crisp, but that will soften when you cover and store it. As you can see, it's just a beautiful looking bread. All the uh, candied fruit and the raisins. And then I'll just taste. Oh, that's so nice. I'm a big fan of candied fruit, so I love how much the bread is full of that. And then it's a really moist and almond flavored batter. It really is nice. So um, you can cover and store this for several days and that will kind of even soften the bread even more and the flavors will kind of mingle. Um, but you can also freeze it for a couple months. It's excellent. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.